everyone and welcome to the briefing for September year-end reporters. The full accounting reminders are linked below in PDF format. Over the next few minutes, I will explain the key issues for each topic. If you want to jump to a particular section, the timestamps are in the notes below this video. So first up, it would be remiss not to mention COVID-19. At the time of filming, COVID-19 continues to have an unprecedented impact on business and economic activity globally. Companies should consider the impact on impairment and fair values, and particularly the impact of the pandemic on the next 12 months for the going concern assessment. For example, any liquidity issues or impact on banking covenants. In light of the impact that COVID-19 has had on businesses, companies should also consider whether their principal risk disclosures are complete. This will vary depending on the type of company. In some instances, this may require further disclosure on risks already identified, for example, availability of the workforce and supply chain disruption. In others, depending on the nature of the business, this may warrant disclosure as a separate risk. Two really useful resources from PwC that I want to bring to your attention that we have linked below in the video notes. Firstly, our COVID-19 homepage on Inform, which is being kept up to date with links to the latest resources to help navigate COVID-19 related financial reporting. Secondly, our publication for considerations relating to front half reporting. One particular COVID-19 associated point that is worth bringing to your attention is an IFRS 16 amendment, which provides an optional practical expedient if certain conditions are met for lessees from assessing whether a rent concession related to COVID-19 is a lease modification. Lessees can elect to account for such rent concessions in the same way as they would if they were not lease modifications. In many cases, this will result in accounting for the concession as variable lease payments in the period or periods in which the event or condition that triggers the reduced payment occurs. Another topical issue of the moment is climate change. There continues to be an unprecedented level of attention around climate related reporting from governments, investors and regulators. Companies should consider the accounting implications of climate change, particularly around impairment assessments, fair value measurements and provisions. Companies should also consider how climate change impacts reporting in the front half of the annual report, including risks, non-financial reporting, Section 172 statement and the going concern and viability statements. The UK ceased to be a member of the EU on the 31st of January, but until the 31st of December is still subject to EU rules and has remained a member of the customs union. The UK's future trading relationship with the EU beyond this date remains subject to negotiation. Irrespective of the outcome of these negotiations, there will likely be significant changes for many UK businesses. This might also impact overseas entities doing business with the UK as well as groups with substantial UK operations. For some businesses, these impacts could be significant, especially when considered alongside the impact of COVID-19, and could include impairments, challenges in estimating valuations, threats to hedge accounting, additional provisions, tax changes, implications for dividend policy, and as a result, enhanced disclosure may be needed. On to IBOR reform. Since the financial crisis, the replacement of interbank benchmark offered rates, known as IBORs, has become priority for global regulators. This is an ongoing process and is happening at different speeds in different parts of the world, but is expected to happen by about 2021-22 in most parts of the world. The ISB has released two phases of amendments to give reliefs from the effects of IBOR reform. Given the pervasive nature of IBOR based contracts, the reliefs could affect companies in all industries. The Phase 1 amendments issued in September 2019 cover amendments to IFRS 9, IAS 39 and IFRS 7 that provide temporary relief from applying specific hedge accounting requirements to hedging relationships directly affected by IBOR reform. These amendments are mandatory and should be applied for annual periods beginning on or after the 1st of January 2020 with earlier application permitted. The Phase 2 amendments issued in August this year cover amendments to IFRS 9, IES 39, IFRS 7, IFRS 4 and IFRS 16 that address issues that arise during the reform of an interest rate benchmark, including the replacement of one benchmark with an alternative. 
These amendments are effective for periods beginning on or after the 1st of January 2021, with earlier application permitted. Accounting correctly for supplier financing arrangements has attracted significant attention from the regulators since the failure of Carillion, with focus, amongst other areas, on a company's source of finances. This includes whether a company has made material use of supplier finance arrangements, if this is transparent from the annual report, whether related balances are appropriately presented as bank debt or trade creditors, and whether subsequent cash flows are appropriately presented. In the UK, the regulator has indicated it expects better disclosures around supplier financing arrangements than companies are currently providing. The accounting for supplier finance arrangements will depend on the exact facts and circumstances relating to them. Entities should also consider how the accounting for supplier finance arrangements is impacted by COVID-19. Further guidance is available in our in-depth, which we have linked in the video notes. We continue to see a large number of questions on the restructuring of issued debt instruments, for example, loan facilities or bond financing and modification of derivatives to take advantage of low interest rates. This is a complex area of accounting which can require significant judgment. To assist companies in understanding the potential issues, some of the key accounting considerations under IAS 39 and IFRS 9 are summarised in our PDF. These include determining whether the new and old debt have substantially different terms, treatment of gain or loss on modification or extinguishment of debt, treatment of fees incurred as part of the renegotiation, and use of an intermediary and modifications of derivatives. Impairment is an ongoing area of concern for many of our clients and regulators remain focused on this area. Some key points to consider in impairment testing are in assessing for impairment, the carrying value should be determined on a consistent basis as the recoverable amount. When using a value and use model, use pre-tax cash flows discounted using a pre-tax discount rate. The fair value model, which is a post-tax model, must use market participant assumptions rather than those of management. The required disclosures in IS 36 are extensive. IS 36 requires disclosure of key assumptions and related sensitivity analysis. Regulators have observed that whilst the long-term growth rate used to extrapolate cash flow projections and the pre-tax discount rate are important, they are not key assumptions on which the cash flow projections for the period covered by the most recent budgets or forecasts are based. Therefore, attention should also be paid to the discrete growth rate assumptions applied to the cash flows projected to occur before the terminal period also need to consider whether key assumptions stand up against up-to-date external market data. In times of greater uncertainty, such as we ex are experiencing now, it is likely to be easier to incorporate these uncertainties in impairment testing by using multiple cash flow scenarios and applying relative probability weightings to derive a weighted average set of cash flows, rather than using a single central forecast and attempting to risk adjust the discount rate to reflect the higher degree of uncertainty in the environment. In September 2020, the FRC released two new thematic reviews in respect of IFRS 16 and IFRS 15. The key recommendations highlighted in each of these reviews are included in the full accounting reminders document which is linked in the description below. In response to several high-profile corporate failures, there have been a number of new reporting requirements in the strategic and director's reports. Personally, I am finding our Where Do I Start guide that we have linked in the video notes a really useful resource in order to assess which requirement applies to which entities, as there are different thresholds for each requirement. New reporting requirements include, in the strategic report, the introduction of a Section 172 statement, and in the director's report, stakeholder and employee engagement reporting and governance reporting for very large private companies. In addition, for premium listed entities, there is the updated 2018 UK Corporate Governance Code. Streamlined energy and carbon reporting, known as SECR, will also impact quoted companies, large private companies and large LLPs.